Hi, I'm Molly Cotter. It's my husband, Mark Cotter. And recently, oh, probably in the last two years or so, God's been softening our heart towards uh, adoption again. And I had started, and Mark had started looking at websites of uh, waiting children. So um, <laughs> we're just going through our life um, until February. Yeah, I was just checking, I wanted to check the email, and um, this little girl was on the email again. I don't know, for some reason she jumped out at me, and uh, the kids were outside playing in the snow, and I took my phone out and, and uh, showed them this little girl and asked them what they thought, and they were really excited, and, um, and they were all in before we were. <laughs> but uh, the little girl on the website was had a congenital heart defect, and it listed that she had a loss of vision. And of course, all through our mind, we're thinking, there's absolutely no way financially we, that we could do this, emotionally, physically we could do this at our age, uh, but God has a sense of humor. <laughs> so, <Not that old. laughs> young spring chickens either. <laughs> so, so we remember um, talking to the doctor from Atlanta and just asking her practical questions about, you know, how would we even get our daughter home? We learned that she was on a feeding pump uh, 20 hours a day. We learned she was on medication several times a day. Um, she was on oxygen at least most of the 24 hours a day. We asked her what, you know, her opinion about what that would mean for us and for our kids if we were to move forward and then, um, and then if we were not, you know, wouldn't survive, what that would do to our kids and our family and how that would affect us. And she said, you know, in her job, she's seen you know, a lot of kids die, and it's always hard, but can always it, it can also be a, a really wonderful thing. And um, it just kind of stuck with me that you know, if that did happen, we, you know, God would help us through it. So, after things kind of stabilized in China, we were busy with you know, all the adoption process and trying not to think about the trip home. But uh, as it got closer, we. Put out the SOS email to everybody and and uh, said we needed all the all the prayer we could get to, to get her home and um, the our adoption agency put the word out and the uh, the organization that had uh, helped fund her adoption put the word out and um, our social worker told us on one of our post placement visits that in one of the staff meetings they were adding it up and they figured there was probably twenty thousand people that were praying for us to bring her home, to get her home safe. It was just amazing. I've never, never been involved in anything like that or been a part of anything like that. It was just an amazing, amazing experience to have people that we didn't know, that didn't know us, that didn't know Libby, but um, we're just we're praying for her. So Libby's got a a congenital heart defect, she's what they call single ventricle, where the right side of her heart didn't develop. So she's um, functioning with just the left side. And um, she had a, a surgery in China uh, that when we got home we found out was only partially successful. Um, so they still don't really know what her prognosis is. It's, it's uh, you know, one step at a time. Um, they'll do one, one procedure and then wait to see if that works. And then uh, if it does, we'll go on to the next step. So she's had um, one fairly major surgery here already up at Dornbecker, and uh, it's just one step in what's gonna be a long process. And we really don't know what that's gonna look like, um, but um, we know that, that she's, she's meant to be here for however long she's here. And uh, she's had an amazing impact on us and on other people and on a lot of people that we don't even know and we're not going to know the, the impact she's had on people until we get to heaven. One of the emails that Mark and I received was from a, a couple uh, from the southern states that had taken care of Libby and I think she, she summed it up so well in her email and she said that she felt um, that Libby in her short two years of life had done more for the kingdom of Christ 
than a lot of adults she knows that have done in her whole entire their whole entire life and I really think that that's true that she's an, uh, affected people in such a way that will for sure never be the same and I think people that we know or um, know her will never be the same and we just pray that you know that obviously that she'll grow up <laughs> and serve him but if not if her life is short Look what she's done already. Psalm 139 has always been one of my favorite scriptures, and it was on the day of one of Libby's procedures up at Dornbecker. My cousin emailed us and said that her pastor had uh, preached a sermon on Psalm 139 um, that Sunday, and it made her think of Libby. And his his uh, main point was that God didn't make us physically perfect, he made us eternally purposeful. And even though um, you know, we'll be, we'll probably never be healed unless God chooses to miraculously heal her, um, she has a an eternal purpose that we're only beginning to see.